This gravestone cost hundreds of thousands of dollars, and sculptors even depicted an entire car on it. Today, we learn the stories of the most prominent criminal authorities, why they were always buried with special honors, and why they have such huge and expensive tombstones. Enjoy watching. Why such honors? You've probably seen photos or videos of such graves. What's most noteworthy is that such memorials are not erected in Russia for people who changed the country, such as scientists and politicians. Most often, these honors are bestowed upon thieves in law. Who are they? These are criminal authorities from the underworld, recognized by other crime leaders. Why do criminals receive such grandiose sculptures and massive tombstones? It's a kind of tradition. Close associates of these thieves seek professional sculptors and craftsmen to pay their respects to the deceased. Most of the time, these highly significant figures in the criminal world are depicted on their tombstones in full stature. This is done so that when criminal groups visit the grave and take photos with it, the person buried there appears among their comrades. Various items from a successful life or the favorite possessions of the deceased are often depicted. On the tombstone of a well-known thief in law, which you'll learn more about later, an entire Mercedes car is portrayed. Many criminals are depicted in a way that reminds others of the time they spend behind bars. In general, all such memorials are erected out of respect for the individual, and the distinctive attributes are often closely related to specific people. In this video, we will take a close look at the lives of criminal authorities, how they achieved their success, and the honors they received after their deaths. The story of Yaponchik One of the most famous thieves in law was Vyacheslav Kirillovich Ivanov, also known as Yaponchik. He earned this nickname due to his distinctive appearance and facial features. Another version of its origin is a story that when Vyacheslav Kirillovich visited Japan and upon his return, he started applying the knowledge he gained in the land of the rising sun. Yaponchik was born in 1940. His father had problems with alcohol, and his mother suffered from a mental illness causing her to change clothes and clean the floors with bleach multiple times due to her fear of germs. Vyacheslav, who was not strong in health, turned to sports. He began stealing at the age of 14. Yaponchik spent his entire conscious life in the criminal world and gained the status of a thief in law in 1974 while being imprisoned at Butyrka. In the early 1980s, Ivanov organized his criminal group. The gang used fake IDs and police uniforms to conduct searches of other criminals and seize their money and valuables. Torture and murder were routine for them. Yaponchik's authority extended not only in Russia but also internationally. In 1992, to avoid another prison term in Russia, Ivanov fled to the United States. Thanks to his notoriety in the criminal world, Vyacheslav Kirillovich managed to hold a high position in the criminal world even in another country. In America, Yaponchik continued his criminal activities, which led to his imprisonment in the United States in 1997. Russian law enforcement actively searched for him due to a murder that occurred in a restaurant. He was released from the US prison in 2004, but was immediately deported to Russia. There, he was supposed to serve a few more years, but in 2005, a jury acquitted Yaponchik. Death and Burial – Conspiracy Theory In July 2009, Yaponchik survived an assassination attempt when he was shot outside a restaurant where he was having a business meeting with a representative of another criminal authority. He passed away on October 9th. Yaponchik was buried in Vagankovo Cemetery. Remarkably, the funeral was attended by many representatives of criminal groups. Different funeral wreaths were displayed at the church where the farewell took place. Some of them had messages from other groups, such as from the Kirov Brotherhood. The funerals themselves followed traditional Russian customs – a massive precious wood casket containing the body. Two years later, in the summer of 2011, a huge monument was erected at his grave. On it, Yaponchik was portrayed in full stature, sitting on a chair, with prison bars on the left and a wall on the right. The burial site is constantly visited by tourists and various criminal groups keep watch over the grave. There is a conspiracy theory that the famous criminal authority is still alive. According to this theory, Yaponchik staged his death and currently leads the Russian Orthodox Church. Indeed, there is some resemblance between Ivanov and Patriarch Kirill. However, this remains a conspiracy theory with no connection to reality. In the following segment, you'll learn about the person Yaponchik met on that fateful day. The story of Grandfather Hassan Usoyan Aslan Rashidovich was born in 1937 in Tbilisi. Grandfather Hassan chose the path of crime at the young age of 16. After the war, finding decent employment seemed impossible, which led Aslan to become a petty pickpocket. 
A couple of years later, he found himself behind bars for the first time at the age of 18. In prison, the young criminal behaved correctly and earned the title of a thief in law. However, he didn't always adhere to the criminal code since it complicated his life without offering much meaning, leading to his initial confrontations. Grandfather Hassan continued his criminal activities. By the 1990s, he was known throughout the criminal world and Russia as one of the criminal authorities. At the same time, his criminal group initiated a war with the Oganov brothers' clan. The reason was an accusation against Usoyan of embezzling funds from the criminal common fund. The conflict resulted in the deaths of 156 people on both sides. The clashes didn't spare innocent victims either. It all came to an end when Aslan hired six hitmen, who in 1999 gunned down the car of one of the Oganov brothers. The deceased's body was riddled with 40 bullets. The second brother couldn't seek revenge for his relative and died of a drug overdose in 2002. In the same year, the war between the criminal groups ended, with the grandfather Hassan emerging as the victor. Wars among organized criminal groups are a common occurrence, so the conflict with the Oganov brothers was not the only one. Many disapproved of Grandfather Hassan's actions. Another war broke out, this time with the Taro clan. The conflict arose due to the 2014 Olympic Games in Sochi. Enormous sums of money were to be spent on the Games, and a portion of it naturally would end up in the hands of thieves. Hassan learned about the Games in 2007, and by that time, confrontations with the Taro clan had been ongoing for a long while. The conflict itself was due to money. Hassan held a meeting in 2008 to decide on the budget allocation, and he didn't invite Taro representatives. This became the cause of the war. Assassination attempt, death and funeral Both sides suffered losses among their supporters. This fate also befell the already known Yaponchik. The incident was a significant blow to Grandfather Hassan's positions, although not as severe as anticipated. On the one hand, Usoyan lost a close associate, but on the other hand, by accusing the Taro clan, he gained even more allies. It was after Yaponchik's death that Grandfather Hassan's power reached its zenith. The attempted assassination in 2010, though unsuccessful, led to a decline in Usoyan's health, with him receiving two bullet wounds weakening his grip on power and authority in the criminal world. His rivals took advantage of this, eliminating Hassan's supporters. In 2013, the final and successful assassination attempt took place. Grandfather Hassan, as usual, visited a restaurant when a hitman shot him twice. The bullets passed through his neck and back. During the attempt, one of the waitresses was wounded in the leg. On January 16, 2013, Grandfather Hassan died due to a bullet that hit his carotid artery. The grave of Usoyan Aslan Rashidovich is on par with those of other criminal authorities in terms of its scale. It features a life-sized monument with inscribed verses and plaques placed on the sides. Incidentally, Grandfather Hassan wanted to be buried in Tbilisi, however, Georgia refused to accept the plane carrying his body, leading to the criminal authorities' resting place at the Hovansko Cemetery in Moscow. Rafshan Lenkaranli one of the suspects in the murder of Grandfather Hassan was Rafshan Lenkaranli, a thief-in-law born in 1975 in Azerbaijan. Before entering the world of crime, Rafik worked as a police officer, following in his father's footsteps, as he greatly respected him. In the turbulent 90s, Rafshan actively fought against criminals, which didn't sit well with them. Due to this, an assassin was sent to eliminate the conscientious police officer, but the attempt was unsuccessful. The hitman ended up in the defendant's dock, threatening Rafshan's family, at which point the 21-year-old Rafik pulled a gun from his pocket and shot the assailant dead, landing him in prison. In prison, Rafshan became acquainted with the criminal world and immersed himself in it, as his previous dream no longer seemed attainable. Extortion, protection rackets and conflicts became routine for the newly established criminal authority. In this new world, Rafshan frequently clashed with opponents, making it dangerous for him to remain in Azerbaijan. He relocated to Moscow, and a few days after leaving the country, he was declared a national fugitive. In Russia, he joined forces with fellow countryman Mir Seymour Abdullaev, who was a criminal authority, but he was soon killed. Thanks to a fortuitous turn of events, he assumed leadership of a group that previously belonged to the deceased. The Vegetable King – Prison, War, Death in his new position, Rafshan managed to gain control of almost all the vegetable markets in Russia. Naturally, such a turn of events didn't sit well with other criminal authorities. It was this control over the vegetable business that earned him the nickname Vegetable King. 
Len Karunli engaged in confrontations with other criminal authorities. In 2008, law enforcement in Azerbaijan learned that Rovshan had been detained in Kiev for 40 days. Lawyers managed to save the authority by demonstrating that in the early 2000s, he had fled the country due to pressure. However, he was caught again a year later and repatriated. The prosecutor's office demanded a 12-year prison sentence, but the court handed down a less severe punishment. As it later turned out, while the investigation was ongoing, Rovshan had already served his sentence, which led to his release after the verdict was announced. Upon his return to Moscow, the long-standing conflict between Rovshan and grandfather Hassan continued. Len Karanli cooperated with the Tara clan and opposed Usayan. He was the primary suspect in Hassan's murder due to these suspicions from other criminal authorities and the possibility of assassination attempts. Because of these suspicions and the potential threats, Rovshan decided to flee to Turkey. There, he continued to control his vegetable business in Russia through intermediaries. However, even in Istanbul, Lenka Runley couldn't escape death. On August 18, 2016, an assassination attempt was carried out, resulting in his death. Rovshan Lenka Runley was killed in his own Range Rover along with another criminal authority. Five bullets struck the Vegetable King, with one hitting him directly in the eye. Rovshan was buried in his hometown in Azerbaijan. A year after his burial, an enormous monument was erected at his grave, brought all the way from India. In this monument, Lenka Runley stood at full height, with a wall and columns behind him. The scale of the authorities' grave was simply staggering. Next, you'll see other intriguing graves of thieves in law. We won't go into the stories of each of the following, but their graves are certainly worth noting. Boris Chubarov, nicknamed Soda, wasn't a full-fledged thief in law, but he had significant connections with the criminal world. Chubarov was an ordinary businessman who amassed his wealth in the soft drink industry. However, Boris apparently preferred something stronger, as he died from liver cirrhosis. Even though Soda wasn't a thief in law, he still held considerable authority. His grave features a fascinating and large monument where he is depicted standing next to his beloved Mercedes. Another thief in law whose grave looks like a true work of art is Costa Magilla. Konstantin Yakovlev was killed in 2003 and buried in a cemetery in St. Petersburg. It's easy to understand that an authority is buried here. His grave has an entire stone complex depicting Constantine himself. He embraces a cross while a snake winds around his leg, with mourning angels on either side of the composition. On the grave of the authority known as Vasya Brilliant, there is a genuine altar. Vladimir Petrovich Babushkin was a criminal authority who spent a whole 35 years in prison. He was a leader of the criminal group and a legend in the criminal world. He earned his nickname Brilliant for persistent pickpocketing even after gaining his authority. He could have lived a comfortable life with considerable wealth, but he remained devoted to his pocket thefts, which frequently landed him in prison. It was in prison that Vasya Brilliant died in 1985. His death led to riots in prisons because a staff member was suspected in his demise. But even the graves of less ostentatious authorities look rather conceited. Vladimir Vladimirovich Savoskin, nicknamed Savoska, also became a thief in law. He earned respect by adhering to the criminal laws. He died of tuberculosis in 2001. The entire criminal world tried to help him by raising money for his treatment, but it was in vain. On Savoska's grave there is an image of an elderly man peacefully sitting on a stool. Next to him is a stone wall, and on the ground there are a couple of marble vases. Although the grave is less grandiose than those of other authorities, it still surpasses the memorials of ordinary people. These were some of the most interesting and beautiful graves among criminal authorities. Thanks for watching.